This lecture will be the second in our Launching the New Nation series. This lecture will focus specifically on Adams' administration, 1796 to 1800. John Adams was elected in 1796. He was a Federalist. He won by 71 to 68 vote in the Electoral College. His supporters were Northerners, merchants, and bankers. It brought to light issues of sectionalism. Sectionalism was where you put your region's interests above that of your nation. It was a northern victory without support from the South, which meant it was very regionally based. Sectionalism is actually going to be a very serious issue. It will lead to the Civil War, and it will come up time and time again over the next 60 years of American history that we end up talking about. Interestingly enough, in the election of 1796, John Adams will win the election, but the second place um, guy will be Thomas Jefferson. And so this will be the only election in American history where John Adams will get the presidency, Thomas Jefferson will get the vice presidency, and so the president and vice president were on opposing tickets running for election. And it'll actually lead to the 12th Amendment, which will allow the president and vice president to run on the same ticket, allowing for them to sort of be working together for the presidency and for the executive branch. One of the big things that Adams dealt with during his administration were the French. See, the French were angry for our lack of support in the French Revolution, and they were attacking and seizing our ships. So American diplomats went to France to, to try to negotiate with them, and they were met by three agents, X, Y, and Z. They demanded the Americans pay a bribe of $250,000 to see Talleyrand, the French ambassador. Now here's the thing. Bribes were not unusual um, during this time, but a bribe that large was very much an insult and very much a slap in the face. And so it's going to lead to a quasi-war with France. In 1798, it will be fought entirely in the Atlantic Ocean by the Navy, which will lead Adams to uh, creating the Naval Department as well as the Marine Corps in order to respond and, and be able to equip this nation to fight this quasi-war. Democrat Republicans were not pleased with the quasi-war. They were not pleased with our handling of the French, and they were very critical of Adams' administration. Adams was concerned about this criticism, and he was also concerned about having possible spies living here in the United States. And so he and his Federalist Congress will enact the Alien and Sedition Acts. The Alien Acts put limits on citizenship. They said that instead of living here for seven years to apply for citizenship, you had to live here for 14. It also said aliens, and those are non-citizens, could be deported by the president. But the most contentious issue was, of course, the Sedition Acts. Anyone who spoke out about the government could be jailed, which, of course, goes against the First Amendment. And there were some Democrat-Republican publishers and journalists who were jailed during this time for speaking um, out in criticism of the government and the president. In response to the Alien and Sedition Acts, we have the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions. These were written by James Madison and Thomas Jefferson. You, of course, remember that James Madison is considered the father of our Constitution and one of the authors of the Federalist Papers. And then Thomas Jefferson, who wrote the Declaration of Independence, and, of course, a staunch supporter of the federal government, even if he wasn't a Federalist. They're going to introduce, through the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions, the theory of nullification. The theory of nullification said that a state could nullify or consider void any law by Congress that it deems to be unconstitutional. It's really interesting that, that these two founding fathers instituted an idea that itself is unconstitutional. States, the only, the only organization that can find a law unconstitutional is the Supreme Court. So states can't trump the federal government. They can't go over the federal government to consider a law unconstitutional. Only the Supreme Court can do so. Um, so it's very interesting that these two guys introduce this theory, but they also believe that a central government should be working for the people. It should not exceed its boundaries in terms of power, and the Alien Sedition Acts had done that. Because of his unpopularity over their dealings with the French, as well as sort of a shift in regional power more towards the south and the western areas, with the election of 1800, Adams will end up losing the election to Jefferson and Burr. Um, Jefferson and Burr will be tied in the electoral votes. 
It goes to the House of Representatives for the decision, and Alexander Hamilton will put his support behind Jefferson. So Jefferson will be president, and Burr will be vice president. This will lead to the 12th Amendment. You see, up until the 12th Amendment, up until the 1800s, the vice president was always the runner-up for the presidency. I mentioned this in the election of 1796. Now, with the election of 1800, Jefferson and Burr were both Republicans. So it makes sense that, you know, they would be together, except for the fact that they were not running together, so they weren't necessarily in agreement about how the government was going to be run. Um, so now we... When we are voting, we cast our vote for the president and the vice president on the same ticket. One of the last things that Adams will do before he leaves office is the Judiciary Act of 1801. This will be by John Adams. It's called the Midnight Judges. He's going to increase the number of federal judges by 16, and he'll do this literally right before he leaves office. One of the judges was John Marshall, who becomes the Supreme Court Chief Justice. He was a staunch Federalist. And he's going to end up seeing, overseeing the first major Supreme Court case, which was Marbury versus Madison. Marbury wasn't given his appointment to the, his federal appointment by Madison, and so he sued to have his federal judge appointment. The Judiciary Act of 1789 said the Supreme Court had to enforce appointments. This was considered unconstitutional since the Constitution doesn't say anything about the, that the Supreme Court has that ability to enforce any appointments, okay? So, the court is going to use something called judicial review. Judicial review is where you decide whether or not a law is constitutional. And this is also the first law considered unconstitutional. Now, the Judiciary Act of 1799 still stands. It was just this one small portion saying that the Supreme Court had to enforce appointments that was considered unconstitutional. So, Marbury's not going to get his appointment. Madison is going to be able to withhold it. And we see this sort of last action of John Adams not only get thwarted in some ways, but also goes to establish the power of the federal government by giving more power both to the Supreme Court as well as, as to the power to the executive branch. Our next lecture will focus on James or on Jefferson and Madison in their roles from 1800 to 1812.